Hey everybody, welcome to J Stern Designs. Today for Quick Tip Thursday, I wanna talk about how to replace buttons on a coat. Now in this particular case, and you may find yourself in this situation as well, you lose a couple buttons, you don't have any of the original replacement buttons, and then you go to find buttons to replace them with, and you don't find enough of the one you like to completely change them all. So that's what I wanna talk about today. Um, this is the coat that has the missing buttons, and you can see here that you know, there's black buttons and there's a little white detail on them, which made them kind of unique. And I'll show you that in a second. But what I want to talk about is, before you run, run off to the store to look for buttons, a lot of times coats and dress shirts have buttons sewn into the seams that you can, um, you know, use to replace buttons that you lose. So before you panic and run off to the store, just check on the inside seams, usually around the hem, to see if there are any buttons. And I did check this coat and there were no buttons. A lot of times too, when you buy an, something new, uh, ready to wear, there may be extra buttons on, um, you know, on a card or in an envelope where the price tag is and the tags for the garment. So check that when you get new garments home and put them in a place where you remember where they are in case this does happen. So in this particular case, no extra buttons. I looked in all the seams and there weren't any. Dylan ran to Joanne Fabrics and he found these buttons. You know, he was really excited about it. The only thing is there were only two cards left with these buttons on there and it's not enough to replace all the buttons on the coat. In our situation here, there's three buttons still on the coat. So you've got one, two, three buttons on the coat, but then there's two missing ones down here. So we didn't find enough to replace all five buttons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make that work. So you can see that these buttons are very, very similar to the ones he found. The ones he found are a little bit larger. So to camouflage the situation, here's what we're gonna do. Now he's like, oh, just put two buttons on the bottom where they fell off. Um, and I said, well, instead of doing that, why don't I replace the four buttons on the coat below the top one? So you can see this top button right here. That usually is not visible because the collar flops over like this and you normally don't see it when you're wearing it. So I thought it would be a good idea to leave this top button and then just replace the ones um, below it. So now you can see we have enough buttons to replace four buttons, so that's what I'm gonna do. All right, you can see that there's a facing here, and if I were to sew the button, you know, right through, it would show here, and I could do that, like being in a hurry, I could just sew right through all these layers and have a little tack there. But it really is no big deal to move this out of the way. And the cool thing is, this whole facing is only held down by this one tack right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut that tack. Now I can get into where the button is. The interesting thing is, I just wanna show you that, see how there's one, There's this is where the button was sewn originally down here and after they sewed the button on, they went in and took one stitch and tacked the facing to the back of the button so it wouldn't flop around. So I can show you how to do that too. I've got this open so I can now, you know, sew the button just to here without having it show on the facing. All right, so let me show you how easy it is to use your sewing machine to sew on these buttons and do it in a way where we can create a thread shank in the back so it's not jammed up against the fabric. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my favorite sewing tool, Scotch Tape, and I'm also gonna use an old needle that I have, um, that I was gonna throw away. All right, so you can see I've got my coat in position right where the mark is. I'm gonna position the needle between the buttonholes. So you can see it's positioned right in between. And then I'm gonna take the scotch tape and I'm just going to tape the needle to the button like that. Then I'm gonna use the tape to also tape the button to the coat in position. So I'm gonna make sure I position my button 
so that it's centered on my mark I made. So it looks like that. Then I'm gonna set my machine up for either a zigzag, a four millimeter zigzag stitch is a good place to start and drop the feed dog so it doesn't sew, so we can tack back and forth. If your sewing machine has a built-in tack stitch or a built-in sew a button on stitch, you can use that as well. So notice I've taken the foot off the machine and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the needle in the hole. I can see through the scotch tape like that, okay? And I'm just going to let it sew back and forth using my hand on the hand wheel, just to make sure I'm hitting both holes. See how I'm hitting both holes? So then I'm gonna stitch back and forth. And the other thing I wanna call your attention to is you wanna leave a long tail. So I've got about a six inch tail here. So before you start stitching, make sure you have a six inch tail in the bobbin and on top. Okay, because we're gonna use that to make our thread chink. All right, so I'm just gonna stitch back and forth a few times. All right, then I'm going to lift the presser foot and move, it, move the needle into position to sew the second one. And again, see how I'm hand walking to make sure I'm hitting both the holes, okay? So then I'm gonna stitch, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna lift the presser foot and I'm gonna take out enough thread to give a hole, to give a tail that's about as long as my first tail. So I've got two six inch tails here. I'm just gonna clip that and I'm going to look underneath. All right, see how nice and neat that is? And I'm just gonna make sure I have two long tails in the back, so I'm gonna use the tails in the back to sew, to tack the facing back on to where the button's sewn. So I've got long tails in the back and I've got long tails in the front. I'm just gonna shut my machine off and I'm gonna show you how to do the rest, um, cause that's by hand. Here is what my button looks like now, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna do is take the scotch tape off And then I'm gonna take the needle out and the rest of the scotch tape is coming with it. So let me get that out of the way. All right, so now you can see I've got these two long tails. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just stick them back through the hole of the button. Okay, so I'm gonna hold my button like this and I'm just gonna push them back through. I'm gonna do it one at a time. And this really just takes a second. Okay, so see now I've got the tails in the back See, it's hard to see because it's black, but basically the tears are here are my tails. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to wrap them around the back of the button a few times. So see, I'm just gonna wrap around maybe five or six times. Then I'm gonna split them in half and, and wrap them in opposite directions like this. And then I'm just gonna tie a square knot. So I've created a nice thread shank and I've secured the um, tails in the front or on the right side of the um, fabric underneath the button. So this is not gonna fall off, it's nice and secure. So I'm gonna clip my threads here. All right, so see how nice that looks? And you can see I've got this nice little thread shank here so the button is not jammed up against the fabric. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the back and because this coat had tacks near the buttonholes. I am just going to thread a needle, and I picked a needle that had a big enough eye that I could thread both tails at once, like this. Okay, so see how it's threaded? And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the coat down like this, and I'm gonna feel with my finger where the button is located, and then I'm just gonna take one stitch. Okay, so see I'm just taking one stitch and I'm gonna stitch back down in that one area, like that. Okay, so I've stitched the facing to the back of the button, just with one stitch. Okay, you can see in there, see it's right there, that's the button, see? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a few stitches into the fabric right behind the button and then because I have this nice long tail, I'm just gonna tie a knot, another square knot. So now I've secured the facing to the back of the button, just like it was when he got it. So that's nice and secure, you know, and I just, I repeated that for all the buttons, you can see, okay. 
Notice the difference between these top two buttons. It's not that bad. So I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. So that's how you use your sewing machine to quickly sew on buttons with a little handwork at the end to create a thread shank and to tack the facing back behind the button. So if you have any questions about this, please post them below or visit my blog at J Stern Designs. Um, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next week for JSD TV on Tuesday.